something's not right. But I can't put my finger on it. Yes, my slimy friend, it's because your antenna have no weight and they're too stiff. They should really be bending as you move. And Blender has a whole bunch of different ways to let you achieve that. You can use a soft body simulation on the mesh, you can use it on a lattice which then deforms the mesh, or you can use it to create targets for your armature to be targeted at. But it's always felt a hassle to me, like it makes you feel like not providing that extra little bit of animation because it's just a little bit too hard. And one of the great things about Blender is if there's a feature that it doesn't seem to have, well, you just make it yourself. You code it, you might write a script, and if you like it, well, you might as well share it because there's a chance someone else will find it useful also. So here's RigFlex. This is my solution for my particular problem. First I'll display the deform bones in the rig. In Rigify, this is layer 30, and I'll set them to be in front so that we can see them clearly. Then we'll select the bones which require the soft body simulation. From the tools panel, I'll select the RigFlex tab and use the initial setup. If you like, you can change the stiffness from zero, which is very floppy, to one which is very stiff, and hit initialize. This will duplicate the bones that have been selected into a new bone layer and give them a temporary copy transforms constraint so that they follow the original bones. Any meshes with an armature modifier or are parented to those duplicated bones will be updated so that they follow the soft body bones. I can then animate the model further if I want to and then choose in the main panel of RigFlex the starting and finishing simulation frame. The bones on the new layer will then get a bunch of keyframes showing their animated form. Now when we press play you can see the animation has some simple uh, first order lag soft body animation. If you then need to change the animation, you just hit the free bake button on the RigFlex tab and that will return the duplicated bones to having a copy transform constraint so that you can modify the animation without the, without the confusion of the, um, of the lag motion. If you want to completely remove the RigFlex bones, there's a section for that in the RigFlex tab, it's the revert and that will delete the new uh, bone layer and the bones and return the meshes back to their original condition. I really in did intend this add-on to be mainly used for small body parts and bits of equipment like a backpack, that type of thing, but I have found that you can use it on more complicated rigs like Rigify and Blend Rig. There's just a few extra steps involved. I can demonstrate if I just add a basic human rigify rig and I'll just highlight the, I'll, I'll give it a little bit of animation then I'll highlight the uh, arm and fingers and generate that new bone layer. And then if I run the simulation for the flex rig, you'll see it's not working correctly. And the reason is on more complicated rigs made with Rigify or Blend Rig, there's an organizational layer of bones and the flex rig add-on can't really work out which bones should follow the original bone and which and which ones should um, should follow their parented uh, simulated bone. Uh, and the trick here is to go to that bone layer that contains the simulated bones and to make sure that all the parenting links that should be there uh, are actually added. In this case, in a Rigify rig, you really have to add the fingers to the palm bones and you have to, have to make sure the palm bones are parented to the wrist or the forearm bone. And if you do this manually, you only have to do it once. When you run the rig flex simulation again, you can see everything works pretty much as it should. If I give you a, a more complete example, I've got a model here which, um, which is a model that I copied from pictures uh, posted by the following users uh, just to practice Substance Painter and um, Hard Ops modelling. 
Uh, but it's a good example to use, I think. And here's a basic walk cycle with this with this model. It's nothing fancy. It it hasn't been tweaked too much. It's just the basic motion of walking, and it just looks sterile, not quite real. So if I display the the um, deform bone layer, and we'll just um, we'll just use RigFlex. We'll highlight the arms and fingers and the neck and the head and generate a new bone layer using the initialize function. And as well as that, RigFlex has an update function. We don't necessarily need the same stiffness on all parts of the model. Zero is very not stiff um, and one basically is so stiff it follows the original bone in the model. So if we choose different stiffnesses for each part of the model um, that that would be appropriate and we have to go through and link the appropriate bones in the simulated bone layer to the bone that should really be the parent uh, in this case we have to do the fingers to the palms the palms to the forehand and any facial bones have to be connected back to the head bone when we've done that we can run the RigFlex bake function over the over the number of frames of the walk cycle and wait for that to be done and now here you see the final walk cycle with this soft body simulation involved it sounds odd to be talking about soft body simulation when the robot is obviously made of hard metal pieces and in fact this makes it hard to do this simulation in other ways. It would be quite a lot of rigging effort to, um, to rig a secondary skeleton, I think, to give the same sort of soft body feel. And you can see it makes a big difference to the actual realism of the walk cycle. Well, that's a quick rundown of this RigFlex add-on. Thanks to the developers for the amazing new Blender 2.8. It seems pretty good to me. So enjoy making your Blender bendier. Catch you later.